Okay, let's talk about the worst way you can approach a problem like this in algebra. And uh, in algebra, you always want to work smarter, not harder. And uh, what a lot of uh, algebra students do, they'll look at a problem like this and they'll kind of jump the gun and they'll start doing things. And uh, what they are doing is logical and even correct. However, it's kind of like that adage, we want to work smarter, not harder. So the worst way to do anything is to do it the long, hard way. And oftentimes when you do uh, things the long, hard way, you don't even really get to the right answer. Okay, so what I want to show you here in a second is this kind of common um, mistake that a lot of students do. Maybe you don't uh, do this particular uh, mistake, but you probably, you know, you need to be aware uh, of this particular approach when you're handling a situation like this. So we're going to talk about this in a second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can uh, check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. Um, I have all the big courses like pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, College Algebra. Um, I'm going to be launching my pre-calculus course here shortly, but I have many specialty uh, courses, uh, especially in the area of test preparation. So if you're preparing for a test like the GED, um, SAT, ACT, uh, Accuplacer, um, Alex exam, teacher certification, nursing entrance, ASVAB, there's so many different uh, tests that people have to take that have major com uh, math components on them. So a lot of people are, are uh, study. Uh, mathematics outside of a math course. So if this is your situation, go to my site. I likely have your exam. If I don't, just drop me a line and I'll give you my best uh, advice. Now, I also work with independent learners like homeschoolers. So if you're homeschooling, I could uh, have a great homeschool learning system that could help you out. And then obviously, if you're struggling in your math class, my program can help you out as well. But one thing that you could be doing to help yourself out is to take great math notes, okay? Over decades of teaching mathemat mathematics, one thing is apparent to me, those students who take fantastic notes almost always end up with uh, great math grades, and the reverse is true. Those students who just don't like taking notes uh, they are like, nah, nah, I, you know, my friend takes better notes than I do. I'll just copy from them. Uh, I like to be on my cell phone during math class. Listen, I get it. I was highly distracted as a student myself, and that was the 1980s. If I had a cell phone back in those days, I mean, like a smartphone, we had those big old huge cell phones, but those, I didn't have one. They were like $5,000. Anyways, you kind of get the idea. There's so much distraction. You have to remain focused. If you're not focused, you're not going to be able to learn. That's the bottom line. And evidence of being focused is your notes, okay? You have to take notes to write down the information and to store that stuff into your into your brain, okay? So uh, as you improve in your note-taking, because most of you can stand uh, improvement, um, I offer detailed comprehensive math notes so you have something to study from. So those would include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video as well. All right, so let's uh, talk about this problem here and what you don't want to do. Okay, so here's the problem. And what we're dealing with is uh, what we call rational expressions. They're basically a bunch of polynomials. It, they're fractions that involve variables, but there's all kinds of technical terms in algebra. Uh, probably the most precise uh, way to describe this is we're multiplying rational expressions, okay? These are fractions that are made up of polynomials. So, you know, most of you out there might say, hmm, okay, so we're multiplying fractions. So let's take the fraction, like say two fifths, and let's multiply by the fraction one third, for example. Say, so, okay, we're multiplying fractions. How do I even do this basic arithmetic of, of fractions? And you might be saying, well, don't we just multiply the numerators and the denominators? And uh, so, for example, this would be two times one over five times three. And in fact, you would be correct. Okay, that's how we multiply uh, fractions with numbers. So this is the approach you want to take with these rational expressions. So you, so that's good. Okay, if you were thinking uh, in these terms, then you're thinking correctly. Okay, so now here is what a lot of students do. They know that they have to multiply these fractions so that they they'll say, okay, I got to multiply across and then multiply across this way. Right. So. They'll multiply this 2x minus 1 times this, for example, and they'll just jump right into the problem, okay? So they'll start doing all the work here 
all the terms and everything else, and I'll end up with some big, huge numerator, and then I'll do the same thing. They'll multiply this times this, and I'll end up with some huge denominator. That is the worst way to approach this problem, okay? Now, although you do need to multiply, okay, that's not the way you want to approach uh, these type of problems in algebra. Anytime in algebra you're dealing with, uh, you see polynomials, okay, things like this, or a trinomial, uh, this kind of situation, you want to be thinking one thing, and that is factoring, okay? You got to know how to factor. That is the secret, okay? There's, here's the problem, here's the solution. If you want to kind of go the hard way, you could start the problem and just kind of go like this and end up all confused, and maybe you might get to the solution. That's if you don't take the time to look for opportunities to simplify the problem. If you can factor and simplify this thing, it just makes the, uh, the path to the solution easy, efficient, and the key, again, is factoring. If you can't factor, you, you're, you're going to have a difficult time even passing algebra. So I emphasize this a lot in my other algebra videos. You can check out uh, tons of videos that I've done in my algebra playlist on my channel. But uh, if you're struggling in factoring, you got to improve that skill. Okay, So I would suggest that if you want to just check your understanding here, you can pause the video and see if you can factor this trinomial, this situation, and is this even factorable, and can you factor this? Okay, so uh, hopefully you pause the video and just kind of give this a whirl. So this guy right here, this is a difference of two squares. Okay, you got to know about that. This is a trinomial. You got to know how to factor trinomials. This guy right here, you can factor, and this right here, let's get rid of this. This requires uh, your ability to factor out the greatest common factor. So in um, uh, the world of factoring, there's a lot of different techniques that we need to kind of employ to be able to factor, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the problem when it's factored. Now, I'm not going to turn this into a factoring uh, video because that would just be too long, but we will see the factors. So let's start with this trinomial here. So 2x squared minus x minus 3 can be factored like so. x plus 1 times 2x minus 3. All right, so you you want to before you start this problem, you factor what can be factored. Always do that. Okay. All right. How about this x squared minus one? I said that was a difference of two squares. That can be factored as x plus one times x minus one. And let's go over here. Two x minus one is prime. You can't do anything with that. So that's just two x minus one. And then we have ten uh, x minus fifteen. I could factor out a five. Okay, that's the greatest common factor. That leaves me with uh, 2x minus 3 uh, as this other factor. Okay, so because I multiply 5 times 2x, I get 10x, and then 5 times this 3 is 15. Okay, so now, at this point, now you want to be thinking, okay, now I can multiply the numerator and denominator. So let's just kind of just, uh, you know, do that now and make this into one big expression. So this is just all this being multiplied by itself, like so, okay? And this would be the answer, but here's the deal. What I can do now is eliminate common factors. Let me erase all this so we can kind of see what's going on. So before I do any multiplication, I'm going to look for opportunities to cross-cancel things. Look here. Uh, I have x plus 1 and x plus 1. I can cross-cancel this factor with this factor. Okay, these are all, this is all now multiplication. And I'm looking for more opportunities. I'm like, oh, I have a 2x minus 3 and a 2x minus 3. could cross-cancel these guys. And then I'm looking right here. I'm 5. I don't have any 5s. I have a 2x minus 1. I have an x minus 1. That's it. So this is what's remaining, okay, what's not highlighted. And that will be the answer. So I have, let me go down here. I have a 2x minus 1 in the numerator. And I have a 5 times this x minus 1. We could write it this way, 5 times x minus 1. And that's it, okay? You could just leave your answer uh, factored, okay? Uh, there's no need to, well, we could. Let's just do it now, uh, 2x minus 1. You could multiply this back in, 5x minus 5. But if you gave me this answer, I, in return, would give you an A+, plus, a 100% a few stars, and I would say you are awesome, and you would end up looking like this. Big happy face, all right? So you can leave your, uh, generally speaking, 
most teachers would be uh, very happy with your answer factor. But if you want to take the extra step and uh, multiply back in, you could have that uh, as your uh, answer as well. Okay, but what was the key to this problem? Factoring. You got to know how to factor, all right? And now, of course, you know, if you were, like, unable to factor any of these uh, type of situations, no, that's use that as feedback to go back and improve uh, your factoring skills, okay? Again, the worst way to approach this is just start, you know, starting to multiply, okay? You'll end up with this big, huge expression here, and even though you can multiply these two together, if you don't simplify your final answer, first of all, that would be a lot of extra, extra hard work. Then you would be uh, facing this big old thing to try to factor out, and effectively, you would be doing your <laughs> doing the problem in reverse to factor it out to simplify. Okay, so again, the main point of this problem is when you're dealing with algebraic expressions, whether it's multiplication, division, especially things like this, always be thinking factoring. All right, so if this video was beneficial in some way, you're like, oh, okay, I knew that, or hmm, that's a good reminder. Well, uh, that's that's great. That was the whole point of this video. So please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out if this video helped you out. And uh, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for a long time. Uh, it's a great platform for someone like myself who is obsessed with teaching math in a clear and understandable manner. And if you like my teaching style, then um, I have tons and tons of videos on my channel organized from basic to advanced, but my best uh, stuff will be in my math help program. So you can find the link again to it by following uh, uh, all the information in the description of this video. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.